This isn't light, by the way. Oh, which making sure we're actually live. Okay, we're live. Hi, everyone. This is Melissa Storm and Mr. Storm. His name is Falcon. I always just call him Mr. Storm uh, for my readers. Not around the house because that's weird. Um, but today we're here to talk about my new book, Let There Be Love. And um, it's releasing this week. And, well, it's already out. It released this week. And there's links in the video if you want to pick up your copy. It's just 99 cents this week. And I invited Mr. Storm here so that we could talk about uh, our real-life love story, uh, which inspired not just this book, but all my books are inspired by our real-life love story. And this one in particular is kind of unique because um, it's inspired by his, his experiences as a junior musher, a handler in Alaska. Uh, so a lot of research from his real life went into this. And also both characters are kind of based on him. Uh, when you read about Shane Ramsey, the hero who I call, Ms. the heroine calls him Mr. Grump. He can be a Mr. Grump too, but I still love him. Just like Lauren still learns to love Shane. Um, and if you have any comments or questions about the book, about what we're saying, about anything uh, that's even a little bit related to us in this book, make sure you leave a comment and we will answer that. If you're watching after the live feed, you can still leave a comment and we'll check back to see what you had to say. So, Mr. Storm. Yes. Say hi. Hi. What would you like to say to my readers? Would you like to let Crash in? I would like to let Crash in. <laughs> we have five dogs. I would like to let Crash in. That's something I would like to say to you, readers. <laughs> we have five dogs, and our Newfoundland, the giant, who's over 150 pounds, uh, he's actually in my book, Love's Promise. Uh, he's a character named Toto in that book. Can you get Sika, actually? Yes. Um, whenever I start doing a video of any kind, Crash decides he has to pee. Even though we, I let him out like two minutes before this video, he always decides he has to pee. Um, so Mr. Storm is bringing over another of our dogs, Sika, who is a husky mix. And she serves as the inspiration uh, for the whole series, the whole sled dog series. When I'm writing about huskies, I'm writing about this one. Um, Sika, can you look in the camera and say hi? We're still working on her abilities uh, to speak human, but <laughs> here she is. Sit up straight. There you go. She is a half husky. Um, She's a palm ski. Yes. Half husky, half Pomeranian. In the Sled Dog series, um, Shane, the hero, actually has 27 dogs, most of them huskies. Um, he Four also, husky mixes. Yes. He also has uh, a big Malamute named Fred, who's his best wheel dog on the team. Um, and I'm sure there's there's some other Eskimo-type breeds in there, but I mostly Huskies, and I mention the, the Malamute a lot. Um, so, Shika, what did you think of... What, what did you think of the book? Do you, do you want to tell everybody what your favorite passage, passage was? Hmm? Yeah? What did you think? Here, Sika. Pick a spot in the book. This one? Oh, it's the... I, his love's promise inside. She really likes page 53. So if you have a copy, turn to page 53. Because I actually, this is an early copy that I had for taking pictures. And it's a different book inside. Um, but that was Sika. So she's the inspiration for the dogs in this. Um, and can you, can you talk a little bit about your experiences growing up in Alaska and being a handler? Like, so in the book... Lauren, our heroine, uh, her father dies suddenly, and it kind of catches her off guard, and she's very upset because they were so close. She grew up without a mother. And um, when she's going through his things to sell the house, she finds a memory box uh, with all these articles about him being a dog racer in Alaska. And he, she never knew about that, and she has no idea why he would hide something so, so you know, non-scandalous, but he hid it for years, and... On a whim, as she's doing some research, she decides to take a handler position helping an injured musher who needs his dogs worked while he's attempting recovery. And that's Shane Ramsey, our hero. 
So um, Lauren, uh, her job is a job that Mr. Storm had. And um, he not only gave me ideas for scenes, taught me about dogs, he, he wrote and named all of the dogs. Um, well, all except a few. I, I named a few of the dogs, and then he's like, I'm going to name all 27 dogs. So he did. Um, and there's a scene where Lauren gets overconfident and falls off the sled and loses the dogs. He did that too. Yes. <laughs> so he taught me a lot of things, uh, and a lot of them are real. And I would love for you to talk about growing up in Alaska and being a handler. Well, now, I didn't so much grow up in Alaska. I, I was born in Alaska, and I moved away briefly, and then came back around the age of 16 and stayed there until I was about 30. But um, in, in, uh, in high school, I uh, got to help out with, uh, with uh, mushing. <laughs> And it was uh, it was a rather fun uh, fun experience because we we started off in uh, in the fall, so it was still uh, it was still very muddy and lots of leaves and everything. So we uh, instead of using a traditional dog sled, we had all these dogs hooked up to a uh, four wheeler, and they they were still pulling it along at a good clip, and that was pretty. Uh, it's it's an eye opening experience uh, then, and then. Uh, you know, later on, we, we moved on to, to actually working dogs with the sleds. And um, because the, uh, the the musher was working full time as a pathologist at the time, he uh, he, he really couldn't uh, run his dogs as often as he would like to. Our newfie is pushing his chair around. That's what's happening. Do you want to pick up Crash while you talk? No, I don't. Does not want to pick up our 153 pound dog. Okay. But, Sorry. um, you know, be, because of the fact that he wanted to run his dogs a lot uh, in order to prep up for for doing the uh, for doing the Iditarod, um, he he actually allowed uh, me and my friend to actually uh, use his dogs to compete in uh, in some some races. Like we did a, a series of three races: a twelve, a fourteen, and a sixteen mile race um, around one of the uh, one of the locales in the. Uh, in the book, actually, um, Tozier Track in uh, in Anchorage um, is where we actually got to do some races, and that was uh, it's 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 a very interesting experience because you have some days where it's uh, where you feel like you're just burning up from from you know running with the dogs, trying to get them uh, moving everywhere, and uh, you know there are other days where the cold just cuts through you to the point where you can feel it in your bones. Um, I, I did lose a, uh, a, a team at one point in time and, um, well, I, I, I happened to luck out at that point in time because, um, one of the dogs that was part of the team, uh, belonged to another, uh, had belonged to another musher at one point in time. And when my team came in without anybody at the sled, the, uh, that musher just happened to be in that area, and uh, yeah, she, she helped out by, uh, by securing the, the dogs and getting everybody all, uh, all taken care of while I was still trudging back to the, uh, to, to, to the dog truck. That would be our, our new fee there, too. He just really gets excited when we do a video. you got to show him a little bit. Can you pick him up a little? Crash, come here. Put him on your lap. Crash, now you have to be in the video. Come on. <laughs> All right. You asked for this. <laughs> I don't know what's going to happen. Keep in mind there's some, some of a delay. What are you going to, are you going to pick them up and come back over here? Oh, okay. Pray that Mr. Storm doesn't throw his back out. And the Pomeranian took his chair. <laughs> Here's another of our dogs, Cricket, the Pomeranian, while Crash, the giant noofy nuisance, is coming into the frame. Cricket, look at you're on camera again. Oh, hello, Crash. Say hi to everybody, Crash. He's not showing yet. Oh. Well. <laughs> I'm seeing the replay kind of shows up for a second. <sighs> So that was fun. Do you want to get the Chihuahua now? No, I don't okay. want to get any more dogs. Okay. Like I said, we have five dogs. Anyways, so I promised we would talk about our real love, a real life love story. 
And I think a good place to start is what the heck uh, Mr. Storm did uh, to come to Michigan because, like I said, he was living in Alaska um, and I was born and raised, well, I was raised in Michigan and living in Michigan. And how did we meet? How did we meet Mr. Storm and what brought you to the lower 48, as they say, up north? Well, um, I had worked in retail for way too long. And any of you that have worked in retail, I have my sympathy and understand why almost 10 years is way too long. <laughs> I had been searching for a way out of Alaska for a while, um, mostly uh, because I was uh, getting kind of burned out and needed a change of scenery and everything. Um, I had tried enlisting in the military and that didn't work out, so I ended up, uh, well, I, I, I listened to somebody that I thought of as a friend at the time who persuaded me to, uh, to move down to Michigan, never really bothering to tell me the truth about what was going on down here, because, uh, um... This was in 2012. Right. And Alaska, for the most part, was, uh, wasn't really affected by the, the recession the way a lot of the, the lower 48 was, so when I got down to Detroit, it seemed a lot like I was stepping off the plane into a zombie horror movie or something. And, uh, I ended up living in a basement in Pontiac, which, um... Well, I mean, if, if you take all the good parts of Detroit away, then you have Pontiac. <laughs> okay, t don't don't just denigrate Michigan. Talk about th like the topic too. That that you asked how I got down here. That's okay. That's how I got down here. So, uh, our love story. There are pertinent facts you left out. Such as. Such as being an aspiring writer. And the cranes. And that. And that. Okay. So, the, uh, the, the year I moved down to Michigan, I had um, started folding paper cranes because of the ancient Japanese folklore that said that if you folded a thousand paper cranes, uh, it would grant you a wish. And... Uh, I was folding these thousand cranes in the uh, in the hopes of finding lasting love. That was my wish. It's been five years. Yes, it has. I love you. Love you too. So, um, at the time when he was moving down to Michigan and folding all these cranes, I was getting divorced from my first marriage, uh, which was an eight-year relationship for your marriage that had become. Um, controlling and abusive and just not a good situation. So I moved out uh, to a new city in my home state to be near a friend from high school. And I wanted to be one of those people in the neighborhood that all the kids like did dares who will ring the doorbell at Mrs. Storm's house, who will ring the doorbell and think my house is haunted and that I'm a crazy old witch, which ironically... We live by one of those now. Yes. Our daughter thinks our neighbor is an evil witch because I told her she is. <laughs> um, I wanted to be that person. Oh, I, I'm glad I'm not that person. Yes. Um, but I just wanted to live in a house full of cats and die alone because I had been so burned by love and I didn't even think it existed anymore. I was writing, but I was writing dark, uh, dark paranormals, totally different, totally different from uh, what you know now. Uh and I wrote a book about, and I invented a character to love. And that sounds so pathetic, but it's the place I was in. I said, no, I'm never going to find real love. I'm not even sure it's anything more than fiction. I'm going to make this character be like my dream guy. And I gave him all these different character traits. Like um, he was in musical theater and a sharp dresser and light skin, dark hair. And he did origami, I swear to God. I swear to God, uh, he did origami and he had a bit of a temper and <laughs> I published this book on the same day he folded his final crane and posted a video to YouTube and you can, we've got the receipts as T Swift, my favorite singer would say. Um, so it was really cool that this happened on the same day. Um, and he, he met me and he went and read my books and he read this one and he's like, 
this character is me because he's folding origami he, at the time he's starring in a musical theater play dressing in drag and i still found him attractive he, well, he played well, juliet well, and romeo well, and juliet well. um <laughs> back up a second there it's it wasn't musical theater so much it, it, okay. it's the complete works of william shakespeare abridged and uh it's you denied it's, the drag it wasn't really drag all right, I put on horrible wigs and some skirts and yelled randomly. Um, if you've seen the show, it's uh, it, it's really supposed to be a humorous look at Shakespeare. It's a three man show, and he was the man who played all the women, and that's how I knew I was in love. <laughs> <laughs> but um, this character was him, even the flaws. It was him, and it was so crazy that I met this character in real life. And at first, I was like, okay, he's a friend. Um, and very quickly, I realized, okay, he's a best friend. Okay, he's somebody who will always be in my life. And friend zones. Yeah. Okay. And he thought that it was romantic. It was not. But it didn't take long. Who was right? We met in early August and became friends online first because um, we're both writers in the area. And then we met in real life for a write-in at Panera. Um in late August, and I invited him over to play karaoke, which we did. <laughs> we um, I won, so I don't know why you're pointing to yourself. I can see you. You're right next to me. <laughs> Anyways, um, and then uh, during Labor Day, we actually uh, we hung out together the whole weekend. It wasn't supposed to be romantic, but I just didn't want to say goodbye. I didn't want to say goodbye. And on Labor Day itself, the end of that long weekend, we shared a kiss. He was horrible at uh, But eventually he figured it out. And you kissed me in the video. People know you kissed me that one Had time. to be told. Yeah, well, eventually didn't, he figured... Didn't get the signals. Didn't figure them out. Had to be told. Yeah, so that was kind of a challenge. But anyways, he's lucky I'm a strong woman and am okay with telling him what to do. Aren't you lucky? So lucky. Yeah. So that was five years ago, um, this past Labor Day. We're past Labor Day, right? Yes, we are yes. past Labor Day. Yes, that was our five-year together anniversary. And we actually eloped and secretly got married on December 1st of that year. So just a few short months later, we got married and we told our families at Christmas, thinking they would judge us because it moved really fast and I had just gotten divorced. And he had just moved to a new state, but everybody was really happy for us and said that seeing us together is seeing love. <laughs> what? I don't know what. I'm a little crazy because I haven't been sleeping much uh, lately. But yes, we're very good together. You're crazy too. <laughs> I'm medicated though. Very I'm medicated. medicated. Okay, anyways, I am crazy. I have OCD. It's fine. Um, and he's depression we're mental health uh, advocates but anyways yes we are a really good balance because in my first marriage the more successful i got with my businesses and my writing my ex got really uncomfortable and tried to make me quit and tried to talk me down and control me and it got hostile um you know being a strong woman but falcon <laughs> likes that i'm strong he's very nurturing and sweet and caring I, I'm usually not those things very well because I'm an achiever and a doer and I love a lot, but I'm very focused on being proactive and what I can do versus um, he'll take care and yeah. So we have, yes, you do. What the heck? You're, you're, you're looking at that instead of me. So okay. I'm seeing a delay. So I'm like, what is he saying? Um, that, that was when you said that you're not a nurturer. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so... <laughs> Uh, so we have a reverse gender household, which means that at, when our daughter was, uh, before she started preschool, Mr. Storm was a stay-at-home dad. He does the cooking. Um, in theory, he does the cleaning, which he's getting better at. That's why I, I prefaced it with in theory, because I didn't want you to think that it was acceptable yet. <laughs> I have OCD. I have OCD. I get really anxious about messes. Um, so poor guy, because he does not care about messes, but he's getting I better. Care. I care. Okay. Just, it just doesn't bother you. Not to your level. Well, it doesn't bother many people to my level, but anyways. Well, then they, they should have pity on me. Okay. 
So I am the breadwinner and he is the homemaker. So I have all the businesses and I love achieving and making some money and making dreams come true and hiring people. And I just love it. I love that stuff, investing, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And he loves nurturing. He's a really great dad to our little girl. Um, who, by the way, was conceived on a Super Bowl bet. Um, so we weren't together alone for long because we got married December 1st, conceived early February, and had a beautiful 11 and a half pound baby girl August 15th. October, October 15th. I know when she was born, the words sound alike. No, they don't. No, I know when Phoenix was born. Don't make me feel bad. <laughs> I know when my daughter was born because that's when I almost died and my whole life changed. And I, I found it like no offense, but I found out what the, the real love is because I love him. But oh my gosh, our daughter. I love that princess girl. And I'm raising her, even though I just called her princess girl, you know, we're raising her to be a strong woman. So it's really cool that she gets to see her mom being a strong woman and her daddy supporting that. And she knows that daddies can be sensitive and caring too. And um, this week I'm really busy doing a ton of things for the launch of the book because I'm trying to make my dream of becoming USA Today bestselling author. And I have a really good shot with this book. So thank you everyone for your support. Um, but he's been here supporting me full time. He's been um, getting me Taco Bell because I'm tired and I always have to eat Taco Bell when I don't sleep. It's, it's a thing. And he's been getting me doing coffee runs and he's been helping um, everything, bouncing ideas off. He's been there and he's been um, by my side just as much as my fabulous assistant Angie has been by my side. I have to give her props. And probably the... the most by my side has been the Chihuahua puppy because she's sleeping on me most of the day um, or stuff like this. So this is my daughter's Chihuahua puppy, Sky Princess, who hangs out with me. And my Pomeranian Cricket gets very jealous. But that's our love story. Do we have anything else to say about the book? Do you have any things you can share about the book? Any thoughts? Talk about your involvement with the book. Okay. Um... When here's the book. Okay. When Melissa said that she wanted to do a sled dog series, I was very excited about that because it's uh, it's not something that was very uh, very close to me. Uh, something I really enjoyed. I mean, I, I love dogs, which is one of the reasons why we have. How many do we have? Six now. Five. We're not Five. getting another dog just because okay. you miscounted. Okay. So Melissa doesn't know about purpose. the sixth dog that's downstairs. Oh shut. <laughs> He did that on purpose. <laughs> but Sicko wants to be in the video again. No, she doesn't. Okay. But the, uh, you know, working with uh, sled dogs was always a lot of fun. Uh, and, you know, d despite the fact that I did have to move away from Alaska, um, which I really had to do for a number of reasons, mostly which was uh, just I was being drawn down a different path. And, you know, I ended up where I really belong I feel um, but you know getting to getting to help share Alaska with uh, with people is uh, is always a lot of fun because there's always a lot of misconceptions about uh, about the state and about everything else um, and of course you know dog sledding you know everybody either thinks back to you know the the old school dog sleds picturing some guy in a huge parka and a whip or something, or they, they take the, the pop culture uh, uh, references like Snow Buddies or you know, <laughs> stuff like that. And Our daughter's a big Air Bud and Air Buddies franchise fan. Yeah. So, you know, um, you know, getting to, getting to share the, the reality of the sport, getting to share the reality of, uh, of Alaska was, uh, was a lot of fun. And, you know, it, it's, it's also something that's that's very necessary. I feel. Um, what, what's what's wrong with you? I, I'm just playing with the puppy while you talk. Oh, okay. Um, and I mean, at, at one point in time, I I know I wanted to uh, to run the Iditarod, and I mean, we're uh, well. I think currently we are about 21 dogs short of being able to. We're not getting more dogs. I don't even know why this is a discussion. Every time we get a dog, I'm like, we're not getting more dogs. Every time it's my idea, and I'm the one who ends up getting us a dog. But every time I'm like, we're not getting more dogs. Three is enough. Four is enough. It's too many. 
And then our our adorable little daughter is like, <laughs> Mommy, I want a Jawa. And she just talks about it for weeks that she wants a Jawa, which is how she says Chihuahua. And she was very specific. So we're like, okay. So we took her to meet a bunch of different types of puppies. But she wanted a Jawa. She, we, she almost wanted a Cocker Spaniel, but she was like, I really want a Jawa. Well, and I will name her Jawa. And we're like, you can't name your 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 dog after Tween. She goes, I will name her Phoenix, which is her name. And we're like, no, you can't do that. And hint, hint, that's something that's important to the story. If you read it, um, pay attention to Briar Rose and how she was named because that comes from our real life. But um, she was really insistent that she wanted a Jawa, and um, her dog, <laughs> Jawa, chill. <laughs> her dog is uh, our golden retriever, who's nine, um, and he has Cushing's, and he's slowing down. He's having accidents in the house. Which is, thank you. They weren't accidents, they were on purposes. Okay. But he's he's sick and he's still really happy and he plays with our Nufi a lot. But he's winding down and he can't he can't play with her as much. And um, we just, we know what's going to happen. You know, we're trying to give him the best life and tell them. But we really wanted her to have a doggy of her own. And she was so insistent that she wanted a Jawa. So um, we went and met the litter and she chose this one. And um, when we convinced her that she couldn't name her dog Chihuahua or Phoenix, she decided to name her Sky and then added Princess, but not before. Not Princess Sky, it's Sky Princess. So she's named after the Paw Patrol girl character. Paw Patrol needs to be more inclusive. It's ridiculous that there's like all the boy characters and one girl and one Two. sometimes girl. Two girls. One sometimes girl. She's still a girl, but she, like they added after the fact, girl. like there should, it should be more inclusive. They don't need to be the one of those boys could have been a girl. Rocky could have been a girl. Rocky should have been a girl, but Rocky's smart and invents stuff and recycles. Rocky should have been a girl. That's a little sexist. <laughs> I think she, she would have been a good role model. But anyways, that's the Chihuahua puppy. Hey, Deb Ballard is with us. Hi, Deb. And she says, uh, every time I said that about cats, another one appeared at highest count six at once. We have a cat, too. We have five dogs and a cat, so we match your six. And we also have a cockatiel. Um, and we have a daughter, Phoenix, who's going to be four in October. And we are sort of in the process of adoption. It's stalled. Um, but we're adopting from Bulgaria one or two children who are a little older and the reason it stalled is because we fell through our deck outside. And by we, I mean I fell through the deck. Then he fell through the deck. Then our newfie crash fell through the deck. And we have a really big deck. And the home inspector, when we bought our house last year, didn't catch that it was not primed well and it was rotting. No, it, it, it wasn't the fact that it wasn't primed. They, uh, it that wasn't at all. The previous owners replaced the pressure-treated wood for outdoors that, uh, of the deck with just regular wood. So yeah, it was it, it it so we fell through a few times, several times. And it's a safety hazard. So we cannot go forward and pass our home study for the adoption until we replace the deck. And that's like a forty thousand dollar repair. And then the adoption costs forty thousand dollars. So it's kind of on hold right now. But you know, God will provide. Maybe this will be the book that does it. Maybe this will be the book that gets us our big author windfall and we can replace the deck and complete our family. Not no good. pressure, guys. No, <laughs> that's not meant to be emotional manipulation. That's just an update. Do you, um, So beyond serving as the res research aid and real life inspiration for Let There Be Love. Because I'm a grump, apparently. He is, because it's based on Beauty and the Beast, which, you know, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Don't go away. I'm getting the cat. Okay. <laughs> no, we're more like in between Beauty and the Beast, both of us. Um, our cat for Deb. Thank you for the prayers, Deb. Our cat will show up. There's a slight delay, so we can't see right away, but you can see the cat. This is Schrodinger. Because, you he's know, purring. he came in a box, so we, uh, yeah, well. He's burning, he's mm. happy. So, yeah, that's that's our sixth dog, mm. Deb. Because he, I mean, obviously, everybody says their cats act like a dog, but our cat actually does act like a dog, and he spends most of his day either annoying the crap out of me. Well, a lot of happy people, or sad. I'm not sure which. I saw an angry person. <laughs> Somebody's angry about the cat being a dog. Either, um... 
either he spends his day annoying me because he likes to try to get on my keyboard or he likes to lay on my hand that has the mouse and he's like, I need you. I love you. And I'm like, dude, so that, um, or he's playing with the Chihuahua puppy who at first he was so angry that we got another dog, but now he loves that little thing. And he's teaching her how to play like a cat. Because they, they play and chase each other, and he bats her, and he got on his hind legs and was batting her with front paws. And then she got on her hind legs and was batting him with front paws. And it was ridiculous. So, <laughs> I'm not sure why I made someone angry. I love my cat. He does annoy him. Come on, cats can be annoying because they're like, I'm going to spend time with you on my time. Um, and I don't care that you're working or writing. I need to lay on this keyboard right now. And he does that to me constantly. But anyways... Uh, I feel like I should be threatening James Bond right now. Don't do that to my readers. Okay. Um, Marshall, get out so of here. yeah, inspiration, research. He always helps me with the outlines for the stories, and I bounce ideas off to make sure they're good. And, uh, and normally when she needs a grand romantic gesture. Yeah, I, I, in my outline I'll put insert grand romantic gesture, and he usually comes up with that because he's much more of a romantic than I am, which is saying something because I'm a romance author. And I'm not. Your romance author's husband. That's the ultimate book boyfriend. Okay. Um, but uh, he helped with the details a lot for the sledding scenes. A lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. And how to describe things. And he also wrote the author's note. Because I usually include, I almost always include an author's note at the end of my books. Talking about why it's personal and special to me. And this time I was like, you know what? You should write it. So he did. So if you get the book for just Actually, 99 cents. I volunteered. Okay. You say, you should. You said, do you want to write it? I said, actually, I do. Okay. But the point is, is he wrote it, and it's in the back of the book, if you get it, for just 99 cents. Um, and the paperback. Can you hold paperback? The paperback is just nine ninety five. So I tried to price that as low as they would let me. Um, so it's, it's a good price for for what I think and hope is a good book. Do you have any closing thoughts, Mr. Storm? Um, I love you. Me or my readers? You. Can you tell my readers so you don't feel left out? Readers, I love her. No, tell them you don't feel left out. <laughs> and I, I love all of you, too. I love you guys, too. Thank you so much for watching our video. And I'll be coming live again tomorrow. If you want Mr. Storm to be included, leave a comment. Because it's some, it takes some doing to get it set up for both of us to be in the camera frame. But yes, thank you for joining us. Thank you for all your support and love and prayers. And thank you for watching. Love you guys. Bye. And thank you, Deb. Thank you, Deb, who said she will buy the book after the video and that we are cute. Thank you so much. Can we blow them kisses goodbye?